My guest today is Nikki Conley. Nikki, how are you? I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. What do you do, Nikki? I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. Me too. Yeah. Are you in the partner space? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. Wonderful. <laughs> We're teammates, you and I. Yes, we are. Yeah. I. You know what? Uh, that's a great job. We should talk about that some other time. Let's talk about really specifically about one of the things that uh, architects work with, which is... Um, Artificial intelligence. I mean, it's a broad topic, but let's let's narrow it down to something called uh, Azure Video Indexer, an AI tool that you have a lot of experience with. That is true. I've been working with it uh, since its infancy stage. What? Oh, how long is that? Uh, it's at least four to five years. Wow. What is Azure Video Indexer? Video Indexer is a tool that is used to glean insights from videos. So think about the cognitive services suite that we have uh, within the Azure stack. So things like uh, object detection, speech uh, speech to text, as well as text translation. Uh, there's keywords, uh, there's topic inferencing, as well as a lot of other other information you can get about those videos themselves. So you give you, you handed the video mm -hmm. and it Watches it, watches it, and figures out you know what faces are in it, who's in it, uh, what are they doing, what objects are in it, what keywords apply to it, that sort of thing. Yes, but the faces are only allowed in uh, non-government agencies. Uh, oh, so if I work for a gun, if I work for a government agency, I cannot use the tool. You can use the tool on a personal basis, but not as a professional tool. Oh, okay, so we can't turn this over to the police, for example, to no, identify we can't. suspects. For okay, Correct. all right. I know that's an area of uh, that was caused some controversy at one point and some arguments, and Microsoft made a stand on that. Yes, we did. All right, and uh, so is it just video or is it all multimedia? What's the limitations of this? You can do video only, audio mm -hmm. only, or both together. Oh, okay. So what kind of stuff does audio pick up? Uh, sometimes people just want to have a uh, transcription from maybe archived uh, video films that they have, mm -hmm. and they also want to be able to translate that into multi-language, and that's typically the use case I see for audio only. Oh, I see. Oh, let's talk about some more use cases. How, how would somebody apply this technology to their business? This has actually been used by a company called Endemol Shine, uh, and they are one of the biggest reality TV production companies, they do Big Brother. Um, okay. I'm, I'm a not huge a TV fan. guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a huge fan of Big Brother. Okay. And what they do is they have cameras throughout a house and all of the contestants are living together and they use video indexer and the insights to determine what bits and pieces and scenes they want to show in the episodes that appear three times a week. Oh, and so it is, these things, it these is, multiple cameras are running 24 seven and their yes. options are I could hire an intern to watch, sit and watch these and pick out the interesting part. Or I could tell a computer to use artificial intelligence, to figure out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh, any, anything else? What about like more traditional businesses? That, yeah, I've, so I've seen this in um, education where uh you know educational videos and films will be within you know uploaded and indexed in video indexer and then the um the platform who hosts those would have search capabilities they'd have clipping capabilities um and because there's so much data that is actually generated from these media files that there's a lot that can be done from a search perspective a personalization perspective um, even like if you want to gear towards teachers versus parents versus students. Okay. I was thinking also maybe for uh, analyzing security video, you know, you want to know there's nobody supposed to be in this room between midnight and 5 a.m. Or maybe only certain people are allowed in the room. Yes. And rather and than so, having a human being do that, let the artificial intelligence take care of that. So uh, video indexer is only for what's called VOD. So that's video on demand. Okay. So those use cases, if we're looking in kind of a retrospective, it is definitely um, 
an area that that can be applied as well as adding bounding boxes to that video to um, do do some sort of alerting. OK, what, what is video on demand? What do you mean? Video on demand is pre-recorded video. Typically, oh, okay. security video is live. Oh, OK, so it doesn't it doesn't work with live streaming video. It works Correct. with recorded video. Got it. OK, now I have uh, been successful and in, in able to sub clip about uh, 30 seconds at a time. So a pseudo live. Okay. Um, however, there's there's other tools that are better for uh, doing live video with cognitive services. Oh, interesting. OK, well, walk us through uh, if I'm a developer and I want to build some application that's using video indexer. What what are the steps? Sure, it's really simple. Let me share my screen and show a little demo that I have. Great. Now you're logged into www.videoindexer.ai slash media slash library. Yes. And did you have to sign up for this? Is it? Uh... I did. And so if you come in here and you don't have an account, there is a free trial account, okay. which allows you to get to most of the features. And you will then be able to load videos and see your insights from there. Is that you have the free or do you have the, the, the I'm in version. the paid version because I use this pretty often, but you'll see I've got a few others. I do have a trial one here, mm -hmm. um, so I can switch to my trial pretty easily. Uh, that one currently has one video in it. And look here, this is a notice on facial identification and recognition. Uh, if you are not a, uh, you know, a, a Department of Defense or Police Department, you can apply for an exemption. This account that I have, I have it specifically to show that you can't do uh, facial identification. Interesting. OK, so I'm going to go back to my one that shows the unlimited capabilities. So I'm going to go back to my one that I have here and you'll see I have some videos, but how simple is it to add a video? I'm going to click this upload button. I'm going to browse for a file that is local on my machine. And I am going to do a Beyond Breakfast. Um, actually, I'm going to do Home for the Holiday because I don't have that one yet. So I'm going to just click okay. Open. I am kind of hungry. <laughs> I have a couple options that I can do here. I can make it public or private. You typically want it to be private, and you could generate a, um, a link to the content. But I'm going to leave mine private. You can look at different streaming quality. So there's the single bit rate where it's not going to adapt based on bandwidth, mm. an adaptive bit rate, which will adjust based on bandwidth, and a no streaming. The no streaming will allow it to uh, just get the insights, but no playback of the video, which I'll I show. See. All right. And you can also have advanced settings. Um, if you have, uh, you can do presets. You can select if you want video and audio, uh, there's a bunch of different features with standard versus advanced. If you've already uh, identified some people models that you want to have in here, you can put that in. What are people models? So people models are if I have access to the facial recognition, I can edit that video and tag it as a person. And I can show that here shortly where I can uh, tag that name. And then anytime it's ran back through, I can um, select a people model that I've defined. So here I've got a demo model where I already have a facial recognition in there and I could use that uh, as my default person model. Okay, and so this, this is then it would recognize uh, people like you and me or the specific people that you've trained it on. Is that the idea? Correct, yeah. I am not in IMDB nor in Wikipedia nor in yet. any sort of Bing search yet. And so therefore I will not be uh, recognized. But someone like Satya Nadella will be recognized. That's my boss's 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 boss. Exactly. <laughs> um, so the, and this is exactly where you can add some of that information. So similar to those, if you want to enter some uh, metadata about the file, some additional description. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to add uh, any additional information. I'm just going to click here and say upload an index. So simple as that. I'm leaving everything as the defaults and just say upload. Oh, that so I'm going to was run that, this uh, non-government sharing that we talked about earlier. Uh, can you repeat that, please? Oh, the uh, the checkbox says I'm not going to share this with police departments. That's uh, yes, that is correct. That's that the is stand what that Microsoft been. made a couple of years ago. Yes, correct. And I am not going to share this with any sort of police department. 
uh, I would just make them hungry. So if you look here, <laughs> there is my video. It is doing the indexing. So I've already okay. uploaded that video and now it is doing uh, the indexing, which is getting the insights. Do you want to see what those insights look like, David? Yeah. How long does this typically take? Uh, it depends on the size of the video. So that includes like what is the resolution of the video? Um, what is the length of the video and the, um, you know, whatever uh, additional settings that I've asked for? OK, thank you. Um, I would love to see the output of this. OK, um, well, while that one's running, I'll show you a different one. And this one actually has me in it in an interview from about a year ago. I thought I thought I was your first interview. <laughs> OK, so if you look here, um, this is the video. I can add um, some subtitles. So if I want to come in here and add some closed captioning. I can come in there and right now it's in English. If you look here on closed captioning. I have captions on or I can select English. So we okay. see we have English here. And I'm going to hit play again. And this is me, so I'm going to click on me. And next. And what this does is it automatically jumps to where I first appear. That is really cool. It is. I really like it. And here's another person that is in the video. Her name is Vanessa, but because I haven't identified her as Vanessa, she still shows as an unknown. I can very oh, okay. simply come in here and say edit and change her name to Vanessa Via and save it. And then now, since she will be in my people model that I created when I save everything, um, next time I'm indexing something with her and I in it, we will be identified. Oh, that is really cool. I like this idea because when I if I'm in that video, I really don't want to watch those other people. I want to see me. <laughs> exactly. I want to see yeah, me. Yeah. And uh, although maybe maybe I want to maybe watching a training video and I've seen <clears throat> I remember, oh, that part that Nikki was in, that was really interesting. It's a two hour video. I want to see the five minutes that Nikki was in. How do I find that? I'm going to scroll through it and fast forward. No, I'll click on Nikki's face. Exactly. Find her right away. Yeah, and all of these things that are on here. So this playback screen, these items here. So our people, our topics, um, okay. those are all called widgets and can be embedded into a custom uh, um, web page. So if maybe you oh, okay. don't want certain things, you can just embed that. So if I want to oh. look at here, so if we look at entrepreneurship, there's several instances where I have this. So I can come to the oh, previous. Play previous, play next. Oh, I like this. And then I jump to the next. And you'll see we can get our topics. Those can all be searchable within the uh, massive amounts of data that we glean from uh, from these videos. But it even tells me where it started and where it ended, those black mm -hmm. bands. Uh, yep. This is the, the Microsoft Build Keynote is coming up. And I always watch that. And... Some of it's really, really interesting to me. Some of it is less interesting. And going back to say, you know, I was, Satya was talking about open AI. That's really interesting to me. I want to go to that section right away. This exactly. Be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. And so just a few other things that are here. We've got keywords, we've got labels, and all of these are jumpable where you can just simply jump to the next. Got it. So this is a lot of AI that is built in um to the um to the tool itself mm -hmm. and all of these things these insights can be downloaded as json files can be put into a large search index as well as learnings from uh you know content personalization well, how do i access this i see it's on this nice pretty web page but if i wanted to put it into my web page where is that information available I'm glad you asked. There is a developer portal that lists all of the APIs that are used to call these. So if I want to look at my APIs, uh, so do you remember when I uploaded that video? Mm -hmm. So if I want to upload that video and I want to do this by just calling the API, I would do um, Xing, 
and it's called upload video. So this is a post action. That's and not a very cryptic name for the service at all. Upload video. <laughs> no. But what's really nice is so this is what our post is going to look like. But if okay. I want to try it out before putting it into my code or even into Postman or some other tool, I click this try it button. Mm. And I'm prompted with all of the things that I would need mm. to uh, to get to to get to uploading that video. Oh, I see. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And not everything is needed. So let's say um, I don't need a partition. I don't need um, it's not external. Some of these things and you can even uh, specify the different languages. So I can come in here and say I want uh, uh, Spain Spanish. So I'm going to say uh, ES for an Espanol. There's also the option for the uh, Mexican version of Spanish. Yeah. And uh, very simply can just do a quick test. I run it and I get results. Which I would what have. If you, a what result. if you don't specify the language? Is it still will it still figure it out? You can default it. Uh, it is best to specify the language, especially if you have multi language in a video. You want oh. to specify the primary language in that video, and then that second language will will get uh, transcribed within there. Very cool. Uh, so I can build this application not only to sort of replicate the functionality of the portal, but also to to query the data and the results as well, right? Correct. So let's say um, you have a video that you want to load. I'm going to use a Logic app as an example. Um, I have a Logic app that is going to read from a storage account and send it into Video Indexer. But oh, when it cool. is finished, what I want to do is maybe I just want my captions so I can trigger this other logic app when that uh, indexing is complete and I can very easily call a connector to get my video captions. And here is where I'm going to decide the format and the language, because if I if maybe it started out in Spanish and I want it translated to English in this version, I can very easily do that. Very cool. Is there a or what are the differences between the that free version, the free trial, and the paid version? Uh, you really don't in the free trial version. You don't really get the ability to do uh, a lot of the custom modeling. Uh, I can show some of that right now by easily switching over to my uh, trial account. So if I want to look here, um, I can look at some of the models that I have. Um, I have speech, uh, but you're limited on the amount that you can have. Um, language still has the classic version, um, but there's also the new one that's testing out, whereas in the um, the paid version, it's got a few more features, feature sets that are in here. Hmm, okay, very nice. Is, can you give me an idea of uh, the cost? Like what, what factors into the costs? Is it the length so the, of the video, the, the yes. things you're um, talking so the cost was recently reduced in February by 40%. Uh, so the cost is a lot less. Uh, I can't tell you offhand what that number is. But it the changes all the time anyway. Yes, it changes all the time. And just like by the time someone plays this, some of these features uh, in trial may not be there or some additionals may be there. I but see. that said, if we're looking at pricing, it basically goes by what is the format of your starting video? Is it SD? Is it HD or is it UHD? And this has to do with the resolution. And so that is one input into the pricing. The next portion of that has to do with the output format. Do you want it to be adaptive uh, streaming? Do you want it to just be single bit rate where it's whatever format comes in is what comes out? Um, so there's a price per, per minute on that. Um, the other factor is whether you want standard or um, uh, advanced if you want just audio only. So there's a lot of factors in that, but the main uh, cost has to do with the file formats of the video itself. OK. Uh, what if someone wants to get started doing this? What's where do they go to learn more? Uh, I would very much look to uh, our learning pages about Video Indexer. There's a lot of hands on samples there that are very, very good. Uh, the folks keep those pretty up to date, but you mm -hmm. want to look for things for the new uh, the new format, the non arm. 
and because that is the latest greatest version of video indexer and there are still some uh legacy which we're calling legacy um that are using the um the older version there's also if we go into this api page if we go to our home close this we go home there is documentation here on here you want to embed widgets you want to do some uh, customization doing some fine-tuned ai models here's some getting started so it's very simple to find and um very easy to get started okay uh, help me understand this um you said that uh, there was an arm version and the new version is not arm is that what i heard yes so let me what, what, let is, me what is the difference that? the new version so there's the classic version okay and then there's the arm version the biggest difference is the the way that it's hosted um in the classic version uh it wasn't so much hosted within azure itself it was more um you would have it wasn't backed as much sorry by azure media services you would have an asset folder within a storage account and so you had all of these things in your storage account and you were paying for egress as well with the ARM version, uh, you you get to those assets, so things, those large JSON files, um, using an API call. So this is where you have this ARM token, and um, so everything is accessed differently, and you're not storing as much. So it's more of a PaaS service in the ARM version. Nikki, this is really interesting stuff. I really appreciate you sharing it with us. <music>